Dave Bartu, CFB Matrix, he, yeah. he's cracked the code on the playoff rankings. He okay. says Texas A&M is going to be the highest-ranked SEC team when the playoff poll debuts next oh. week. Howdy, everyone. Welcome into the Tex Ags Rewind. David Nuno, Olin Buchanan on their way to South Carolina already, so we'll handle the rewind here in the fishbowl. Uh, on the rewind today, we had Bob Sturm. He joined OB and David, talk a little Aggie football, little Cowboys in there as well. Had SEC Mike, as always, on the program to talk Week 10 in the SEC. Billy Lucci and the final countdown with just Steve McKinney in studio. Uh, Richard Zane hopping in the host chair for a little bit. Check it out. Regardless of what happens the next two, three, four weeks, I feel like everybody agrees this team is on the right trajectory for the future. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really the the what... I kind of thought the story of the 2024 season would probably be about is just, you know, was the hire the right hire? Is there is there like a a public faith in in what Mike Elko has done to the program? And, you know, then we'll start talking about bigger goals in 25 or 26 and so forth and just sort of try to take this thing with some level of patience for just the development of a build. And to see it happen so quickly, uh, starting with, you know, the the perhaps reality check of, of Notre Dame and then to begin to build from that. And, yeah, I think I would imagine anyone who enjoys this program is over the moon about uh, what we've seen in the uh, last two months since because, um, really, they, they're, they're checking many, many, many boxes on their way to establishing themselves as, as a program to be taken extremely seriously uh in 2024 and so yeah it's 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 unbelievable how quickly things have uh, transformed hey bob oldham buchanan here are you buying are you personally buying texas a&m as the number 10 team in the country you know i that's that's interesting because your brain has to get used to even that possibility uh based on where we've been the last couple of years right so so what what i would look at there is is does, is this team a heavyweight in the trenches? You know, I mean, that's that's what I'm always looking for. Is is I want to know that you're healthy up front on both sides of the ball, and and I think the results we've seen in 2024 there on this team are probably as encouraging as as any place on the roster. Is that we knew the defensive line was extremely talented. Now we need to see the results. Okay, that's excellent. Now you flip it around to the offensive line, which has been the real issue the last couple of years in my opinion. You know, and 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 they're they're doing an unbelievable job stepping up to that challenge which which of course will be another one tomorrow but every week in this league uh you're you're dealing with you know premium defensive fronts I, it is interesting because they fed the ball to Jarquez Hunter against a flailing Kentucky team that people are so quick to want to jump on momentum as it pertains to Vandy I mean to Auburn apparently even Vegas I watched them a week earlier they lost They lost to a Missouri team that lost Brady Cook on the first drive. Drew Pine might be one of the worst college quarterbacks, <laughs> SEC quarterbacks I've ever seen. And they played three quarters with that guy, and, and Auburn still managed to lose to Missouri. So I, I don't know where this – I guess you just – we're just giving teams momentum after one quality performance because that was it. I mean, that was it because a week earlier was a horrific uh, performance in Columbia. Right, and Vanderbilt is still got a lot to play for. Yeah. I mean, they are a win away from making a bowl, which, you know, vast majority of places, particularly in the SEC, that's not an accomplishment. That is uh, one hell of an accomplishment for Vanderbilt if they can get there, and, th and this may be their best shot because after this, they have South Carolina, they got LSU, and they got Tennessee. So if they don't beat Auburn, they may not get there. So oh, I, I think Vanderbilt's got a lot to play for. And not that Diego Pavia is ever short on confidence, but you have to imagine he, he is supremely confident after beating Hugh Freeze the last two seasons, including at Jordan Hare last year. Ah, that's right. The last two seasons. That's right. Mm -hmm. Liberty. Well, right. I'll tell you what, by the way, I here's my prediction. If, if Pavia is healthy – you know, a few games from now, my prediction is Vandy over Tennessee. <laughs> Let's go. That's mine. That's my hey, SEC. Uh, don't make that's me my sick, SEC. Uh, my, on you. That is my yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell Jelly Roll, but that is my SEC Mike 
level <laughs> prediction. I'm calling my shot. So if Vanderbilt beats Tennessee, we're going to have to see Billy Lucci dressed up as Jelly Roll. <laughs> Can we do that? We make that bet? I might have the real jelly roll in here. You never know. All right. Mike, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We'll chat with you next week. Absolutely. And one quick thing out the door. Uh, I had Dave Bar 2 CFB Matrix. He, yeah. He's cracked the code on the playoff rankings. He okay. says Texas A&M is going to be the highest ranked SEC team when the playoff poll debuts next wow. week. Wow, that'd be fascinating. Well, we know what they have to do in order to find out if he's right. Uh, SEC Mike at the end of that last segment brought up an interesting point about A&M being the highest ranked team should they win in Tuesday's college football playoff well, ranking. Well, it's interesting. And Dave Bartu cracks all the numbers and stuff, and, and uh, it's a little different. But looking at the resumes, sometimes you just sometimes you can just do common sense, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to have a freaking computer formula to do it. Um, so. As I sit here without my computer, well, I've got I, I'm just going to apply a little common sense. It's why I thought, you know, A&M's ranked 10th right now, and I thought you'd see them, if they win this weekend, come in in that playoff ranking. I was thinking more like six, and we were saying yes, uh, Monday, probably ahead of Te- or when you and I were on, I think probably ahead of Texas. Uh, so, okay, so I said that just off common sense and and looking at the resumes, right? Okay, so there's that one. Um, then the other one I thought about, was so, so then it clearly they're going to be ahead of, I think, Texas. You look at Tennessee, which would be the other one. They're going to be ahead of a two-loss Bama. It's really Texas, Tennessee, and, uh, and Georgia that you're asking about, right? They're yes. higher than a two-loss Ole Miss. They're higher than an LSU team they just beat. Um, there, those those body of works are pretty comparable, but a and beat LSU, and they beat them by 15, mind you. Remember that. The, for as close as that game was for a large part of it, Texas A&M beat them by 15 points. The spread was A&M by one. They, they, out, they outpaced the spread by two touchdowns, which is wild, again, and they've won four out of five SEC games by double digits. Mm-hmm. Okay. You look at A&M, Tennessee, and the Vols have what? They both have wins over Florida. Yes. A&M by a much wider margin on the road versus Tennessee in overtime at home. If you're doing common sense and watching that game, you realize they probably should have lost that game, Florida, completely. I'm with you, man. I mean, it just, there's something feels different about this team, about their mentality. It feels like they realize they're playing for something bigger than just last Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Like they, I think they they understand the importance of these next few games and what they could do to this program, to this university, um, to their own legacies. I mean, they got a, they got so much to play for right now. Yeah, and they got a chance to do something that's never been done at A and M. They have it all in front of them. Yeah. I've got this quote from Marcel Reed. This is Saturday night after he comes off the bench, leads that comeback to beat a top 10 team. You're talking about locking in and the messaging from And a freshman. We won this game, but it's on to the next. We're not worried about this. We're going to start preparing for South Carolina because it's the next game ahead, and we've still got a long journey this season trying to get to where we want to go. Yeah. That's less than an hour after the clock's hit zero. Yeah. And it's That's, a freshman. You know what that is, man? That's culture. Yeah. That that doesn't that that sentence doesn't come out of a vacuum. Marcel Reed didn't just wake up that day and think of that. Mm-hmm. That's the messaging that's been preached to these guys day in and day out in that facility, and it's resonating. They're hearing it, they're believing it, and you can see that they're believing in their team and, and what they can accomplish. So it's exciting I, times. I feel like there are two things that people just, when they're breaking down this game, Stephen, I, I've talked it in, I've talked it into the ground already, but they want to see an upset. Yeah, oh yeah. The national media, college football fans, we, we're, we're in that boat too every week. We want to see upsets. You want to see carnage. You want to see the great teams go down. You want to see the playoff picture muddled and the conference races muddled. A&M's on that side of it now. They've crossed over. They have. They're on the other side of that. Everyone wants to see it. The announcers want to see it. People in Tuscaloosa want to see it. Knoxville, Athens, Austin, Baton Rouge, they all want to see A&M lose. 
By the way, this rewind is brought to you by Specs. I'm outside of the Rollo Insurance Studio, uh, and we hope you join us next week. We'll break down South Carolina and uh, look ahead to the bye week and uh, everything coming up after that. Thanks for watching.